All right. So engaging live. And there's two parts I'm going to talk about. Like the first is about lag and it's about um, keeping it simple so that you have opportunities for people to, to give input. Now, when you're in a face-to-face -face conversation, you can respond immediately. You, you can watch a person's facial expression to see if they're following or if they're confused. If you've ever tried to do, say, karaoke or singing in a video conference, you'll know that there can be a huge delay between the music and your singing. And we can try to reduce this delay on our end by using multiple computers. Uh, but ultimately, we're going to have to interact with the audience in a different way, especially when we're live. When you're on a video conference, your computer is doing a lot of things at the same time. It's trying to improve your video image. It's trying to compress the video into a smaller format. And it's trying to encrypt the video so that others can't easily see it. And so the result is sometimes a delay in performance that comes from the computer itself uh, that we're using. And so many students that had those older Chromebooks, uh, they noticed right in September that when they tried to do other things like open slides or have a poll during a live class that it slowed down to the point that it maybe didn't even work. And this is exactly why your slides running slowly, like your, your slides run slow or um, your computer lags when you try to do things like play a video. And you can see, like I played several videos during this uh, presentation, but how do I do it? So uh, certainly buying a faster laptop, it can help, but it's expensive. And it can still lag if you're doing anything processor intensive. Uh, fortunately, the gaming community has actually solved this problem for us using tools such as this one. This is the Elgato HD60S. And what it does, it's a capture card, and it turns an HDMI input into a web camera on your laptop. So you just plug in like an HDMI input, which could be another laptop, and then that becomes a web camera on, on, your, on your laptop. Uh, this way, you can have one laptop for your video game or your presentation, and you can have another, which is connected for live streaming. So like this would be the video game computer, and then the, you'd have another one which is just focused on just figure out the live streaming, just do that well. And that's really, really powerful because that's going to give you a lot of more ability uh, to do more things without having to worry about it lagging all the time. Now, you can take this idea even further with the dedicated hardware like the Blackmagic ATEM Mini Pro that acts as a web camera and also allows you to switch between four, so like four of these HDMI inputs. The true potential of the ATEM Mini Pro comes when you connect a network cable so that you can send your live video directly to the streaming service, uh, such as Restream. Now, I've been using this for a lot of my Restreams because it gives way better performance because that compression, all of that work is done by the ATEM Mini Pro instead of by my laptop, which means that everything runs smoother. The laptop runs smoother. Every, everything is running smoother. So maybe I'll show you a video of what that looks like as well, because I think this will hopefully give you some sense of how all of this stuff comes together. Switch between multiple inputs, I use something called the ATEM Mini Pro, and it's powerful for two reasons. The first is because it allows me to switch between multiple inputs. Uh, the example that I'll show you is switching from here to my Mac, right? So it allows me to even put my camera image in there. It does green screen and everything as well, which is amazing. And it allows me to switch between different cameras. So now I'm facing this camera right here. So that's pretty cool, right? That this, this is able to, to handle the different types of images and, and different resolutions, right? And so it's just another, another powerful tool. And so being able to switch between inputs is powerful. But in addition, you can see it has something very powerful here in the Pro, which is a network cable. And that network cable is directly connected to my network 
in order to allow me to do streaming. And let me show you what that means. So, <coughs> so what I mean by this is you want to be able to not have to ex consume a lot of computing resources in order to send a stream. And sending the stream means a lot of computing power. <coughs> they have to compress the video and then send it. You don't have to do that. You don't have to do that with this example because once you've uh, taken the video, you can very easily co compress it and you can convert it into different formats inside the A10 Mini Pro. That does the streaming for you. So now your computer can be then focused on other things like showing your slides or something else. And that's why I emphasize like having other devices, splitting your computing up as much as possible will make a big difference. It will make everything smoother. There will be less lag. You will, feel, you will see less like hiccups in terms of your presentations. Things are going to go a little bit more smoother also because you have backups. Now, the disadvantage is it does make things more complicated. Uh, and that's where the next part where you need to have a, a checklist of improvements, it comes in. Thanks. You know, teachers in a classroom, you, they can watch the facial expressions of their students to know if everyone understands. So what can you do when you're live and people don't have webcams on? Well, what we have to do is we have to make those implicit things uh, like nods or confused expressions. They're like, I don't get it. Like normally if you're in a classroom, you see those things. You got to make them explicit in the chat. Ask, are you getting it? Is this sinking in? Put yes in the chats. Put yes in the comments. Yes? Oh, Eric's here. Okay, great. Right? So those simple things, it's, it's key to make it very easy to respond. Like start with a simple yes or a no rather than some complicated question, because we want to make it easy and you need that type of feedback, especially in a live presentation. Now, it's important to remember that there may be a 30 to 60 second delay between when you say something and when you get a response. Just think about it. Like to type in the chat on a mobile device, you need to uh, click the chat icon and then you need to click the text uh, bar, and then you need to type in your response, and, and then you need to send it. And so you need to be a lot more patient than when having a face-to-face -face conversation. People want to respond, but it takes time. It actually takes a lot of time. And so I found that it helps if you tell people that you will be asking for their response in advance. Like say, okay, in a moment, I will be asking for your response. Um, I'm going to ask you to say yes or no in the comments. Um, you should open up the chat now, uh, and then you explain the question. And then this way, there's time for them to get ready to open up the chat, which takes a few seconds anyways. And then when you ask the question, you're going to get the response a little bit quicker. You know, a face-to-face -face conversation is always filled with like props um, that serve as as topics for discussion. Because like, if we're in the same space, the whole environment becomes different props that I can point to. But these days, there is way too much reliance on just using like slides, like PowerPoint slides or um, Google slides, as the main prompt for discussion. And just think about it. You would never just stare at a prop. Like, like let's say we had a, a prop like this. You would never just like stare at that for like one whole hour. And, and that's why I often like to use the ATEM Mini Pro to overlay things like video or um, as a circle on top of my slides. You know, there's a number of reasons. It, and then the point is to, you just want to bring up the slides only as needed and then return back to the face-to-face -face conversation. Because people want to engage with other people and not a deck of slides. So when this like, slide is massive and that's all you see, like, that's not really what people want to engage with, right? You don't want to like, engage with like, the slide deck. No, you want to engage with the person. 
Now, you know, I know if you're like me and you don't feel uh, comfortable speaking for 45 minutes without a, a script, uh, then there are apps. Uh, and I showed you the uh, Prompt Smart Pro uh, that uses a voice recognition AI to automatically advance a script so that all you need to do is basically read the script or the main points. Now, should we use it or should we not? Should we just have some main points? There are many different opinions about using scripts, and I think it depends on how you use it. So if you're just going to read it in a monotone, then it's better to just have some key points so that you can speak naturally. But what I've learned is that all the best keynote speakers that I know, they, they use scripts. They're, they're all written in a conversational tone. That through the voice of the, the speaker, and it allows the speaker to focus their efforts on getting the right tonality so the, and the right expression, rather than presenting the content in the right sequence and having the right kind of opportunities to, to ask questions. And I can tell you, as a presenter with ADHD, Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, Having a script has been a lifesaver for me because it allows me to remove technical distractions and focus on the expression and deeply thinking about your comments and questions. Uh, it, it gives me opportunities. It reminds me like, hey, I need to engage you every few minutes. Um, it also reminds me exactly which screen transitions I need to do. When do I need to switch cameras? Um, especially when I'm doing it live, it allows me to have a consistent quality experience from presentation to presentation. And another benefit is that it also, the script also helps me turn my talks into a blog post uh, or even a future chapter of the AI parenting book that I'm working on. And most importantly, it allows me to modify my scripts uh, so that the, I can have the elements in my improvement list always included. 